Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture 43, also in lecture 44, I want to talk about, uh, well, basically story problems involving exponential functions. How do we model uh, things using exponentials, and why should we model things using exponential functions? It turns out that many natural phenomena have been found to follow the law that an amount A varies with time according to the following formula you see right here. The amount A is equal to some initial amount, A naught, uh, times E to the KT, where uh, T is some measurement of time and K is gonna be some growth rate. So different things might grow at different rates. Uh, so we have that initial value. And so this right here is often, this formula is often referred to as exponential growth or sometimes called uninhibited growth in contrast to some other uh, growth models we'll see a little bit later, exponential growth. Uh, it turns out we've seen this formula before. We've wrote it in a slightly different way. A equals P e to the RT, PERT, right? Continuously compounded interest is an example of this type of exponential growth, that interest grows exponentially, okay? And when we talked about compounded interest, we gave some idea of where this number E came from as the number of compounds was allowed to go towards infinity. We are able to pull out this number E. That is, there was no break in growth, right? So when it comes to like population growth, uh, that often is a good model, right? That there, when you have a certain species that you're watching, whether it's humans or bacteria or bunnies or whatever, uh, there, if, you know, if there's like seasonal, uh, type birth, right? Like, you know, bears only have their babies in the spring or something like that, right? Then this wouldn't be an appropriate model, at least not from a month to month, but maybe from year to year, that would be appropriate. But so the idea is if there's no like noticeable break in the growth, right? There's no like seasonal growth or something like that. Then this idea of continuously compounded growth is appropriate. And that's where this exponential growth comes from. The basic idea behind exponential growth is that the growth rate is proportional to the current population. The bigger the population is, the faster the population will grow. And that's, that's the main idea behind this exponential growth. Uh, we can use that to grow, talk about population, which we'll talk about. We've already done some financial examples. And we'll see also later in this example that we can use this, uh, this growth model also to represent decay models, right? So when you have this expression e to the k, like we see in this formula right here, if k is a positive number, that means e to the k will be a positive base that is a base greater than 1. And therefore, it will represent a growth model. Uh, when k is positive. On the other hand, when k is negative, you're actually going to be taking e to a negative power, right? That gives you a reciprocal. Your exponential will have a base less than 1, and that causes it to be a decay model. So when k is positive, this means growth. When k is negative, this means decay. And so sometimes it's appropriate to have a decay model. We'll see that if you have a hot object and you put it in a cold environment, the temperature actually will decay over time. It gets cooler. Uh, that We can see that with Newton's law of cooling. Uh, we'll also see later in this lecture the idea of radioactive decay, that the mass of an object goes down over time as atoms fall apart. In the, with the radiation there. Again, those are all some examples we'll see in this lecture. So for this current video, let's consider a very basic uh, exponential, well, population growth problem. So we have an initial population count of 500 in a culture. So culture just means a collection of bacteria right here. So we have 500, the initial bacteria count in a culture is 500. A biologist later makes a sample count of the bacteria in the culture and finds out the growth rate is 40% per hour. Okay, so our first question is, can we come up with a formula to model the growth of this bacteria right here? So let's notice some observations we made. So the initial bacteria was 500. So our initial amount uh, is going to be, we could call it the initial population. That turns out to be 500, okay? Because our goal for our formula is going to look something like the population is going to look like an initial population times E to the KT. That's what we're trying to figure out here. So we have the initial population is 500. Um, the bacteria is growing at a rate of 40% per hour. So this tells us two things. One, T is going to be measured in hours, right? So we're going to talk about hours, hours since, uh, whoops, forgot a letter there, since the start, whatever that is. So the 500, the 500 mark. And then our growth rate K, 
uh, is going to be 40%, so 0.4 per hour. When you talk about your growth rate, rates are always ratios, right? Um, it should be something per whatever, right? So this is going to be per hour in this situation here. So when we put that together, we see that our, our model is going to be the population with respect to time is going to equal 500 E to the 0.4 T. And we're going to measure their growth in hours. So that's our formula we're going to be using to model this. And so then we could ask questions like, okay, what is the estimated amount after 10 hours? So after, after 10 hours, how many bacteria should we expect to have? Well, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to compute P of 10, right? So we're trying to figure out 10 hours here would mean that T equals 10. So that's what we need to compute. What's P of 10? So we would take 500 times E to the 0.4 times 10, which 0.4 times 10, will, of course, would just be four. But we're gonna get E to the fourth, right? Um, you know, given E is some irrational number, 2.7, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, I'm not gonna bother doing this without a calculator. So use a calculator to help you out here. Uh, consult your calculator. It's gonna tell you that E to the fourth is approximately uh, 54.5981. Try to have a lot of decimal places here. It kind of depends on what you're trying to model here. If, in this case, we're talking about bacteria. Bacteria are organisms. You can't have a fraction of an organism. It's either alive or it's dead, right? You can't just take a fraction of it. It's like, oh, we're gonna count the kidney of this person, or we're gonna count the, um, I don't know, the nucleus of this bacteria. No, you gotta count the whole thing. So you gotta round to the nearest integer. But add a couple extra decimal places to keep track of things, right? Uh, because of course, if you multiply this by a big number, that's gonna cause the decimal to move over a couple. We need to have a lot of decimals here. Uh, in a scientific setting, we might be paying attention to significant digits. We're not gonna worry about that in this mathematical setting right here. 500 times this approximation is gonna give us uh, 27,300, right? If we round to the nearest, uh, decimal. And again, I should probably mention that these, of course, are approximations that we were exact up to e to the fourth. But after that, when we started consult consulting our calculator, uh, these are approximations. So we should expect about 27,000 bacteria um, after 10 hours of growth, assuming their growth rate remains constant throughout that duration. And so again, this is just the typical example of how one does calculations with exponential growth.